Hey everyone, and welcome to Falling Star, now finally released after about a year of development on it. And for everyone who hasn't been paying attention to it since it started being developed last March, Falling Star is based on an older series that I did back in 2021, where I would take suggestions from the comments of YouTube videos and use those suggestions to develop a mod called The Mod, and Falling Star was in a way season two of that. So almost every Every country in this mod, besides a select few that I made, are all suggestions from people in the comments. The countries are mostly based on their suggestions. And to repeat, the basic premise of the mod is this is North America 66 million years ago and we're playing in the decade before the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. So a kind of weird premise and it has some strange mechanics. And before we get started on this too, there are three key categories of help that I received making this mod. First, as I've already talked about, people suggesting ideas for stuff to add to the mod. I have a PDF that I'll probably link to that has every single country in the mod and who came up with the idea of the country. Also, next to that, I have who made every flag for every ideology of every country. Some countries aren't on there. If the country isn't on there, then it means that I made the flag if there is a flag. Special thanks, though, to Vex. She made probably half or more of the flags in this mod, so that PDF is mostly just the one name on every tile. The third category is country leaders. I commissioned art for some of the key country leaders throughout the mod, and there's another document that I have that has links to all of the artists who made all of the portraits in the mod. And I guess a fourth category of people who helped are the testers who tested the mod. The mod didn't have too much testing, but it had enough that a lot of important features were added because of testing. For example, there wouldn't be a canal here if not for the testers saying it was really annoying and yeah, that was a good point too before Bastia had to move its navy all the way around the continent to get to the other side so that was more of an oversight on my part. It's very good that that got added. As the Godless Empire the first thing that we will be doing is dealing with the Bastian resistance and the fourth Draganiopolis crisis. Then later the major war that will develop is the fifth Draganiopolis crisis which we won't be dealing with for quite a while. We as the Godless Empire though still have two puppets, Ferva and Imperial Vyspire, though Imperial Vyspire will do this focus here which will remove their puppet status temporarily so they can join the civil war between Elendar and the kingdom of Elendar. Ferva kind of will stay loyal, but how loyal they stay depends on how many of these provinces that they claim that we give them, so there's a good chance Ferva could end up being our enemy in the future too. A lot of these other revivalist countries can also join our sides by various means. We can't really count on them though. The biggest question is this guy here. He can become pretty powerful, but there's a chance that even if we support him, he just decides to betray us later on. Yeah, and here's Vyspire announces its ambitions. They become free. Diarvis is a very ambitious general within the empire, hence why she kind of controls her own independent part of the empire. We'll see how well she fares. There is a problem though because if she fares too well and wins the civil war annexing everything that puts us in a bad situation because she won't really want to become our puppet after that. She will try to pursue her own ambitions. What we would like to happen is for her to take this city here, Vyspire, and then peace out of the civil war which will happen if she doesn't make good progress fast enough. I'd say there's like a 50-50 chance that one of those two happens. The third option is that she capitulates which is surprising surprisingly not as bad as when she becomes really powerful and independent and tries to kill us. Oh, I also forgot to mention this too, there is a mechanic with parliament and imperial approval of our actions right now. Parliament has low approval, so bad things will happen and the emperor has pretty high approval. What we'll want to do is increase parliament approval and then we won't get these negative effects. We'll just have to do this concessions to parliament decision once we have enough political power. Our political power situation is just pretty bad right now because of having to deal with this crisis. But once this crisis is gone, we should actually make political power. And then the AI will always usually commit to Emerald Way, but Bastia has a decision of whether or not they want to defend their holdout in Draganiopolis, their like secret base of operations there called Emerald Way. Since they commit to that though, that means we need to be prepared for a Bastian incursion soon in the fourth crisis. It won't be too difficult to beat. It's much 
more difficult though to play as Bastion. The Empire, it's pretty straightforward for them. We also receive an offer from the Knights of Hedromantic, because since we're so starved for political power, I will accept it. Now we have positive political power. I'll wait a few days before doing a focus too, so we can do concessions to Parliament and then do the focus, which will put us in negative political power, but at least we did that decision. And I didn't mention this earlier, but we start off with a series of events known as the Dead Watch maneuvers, which involve us taking control of the core constituencies. We just ignored that though, because the path we'll be playing through today involves us trying to subjugate them later anyways. But that is an option if we wanted to try to take over those states earlier, which is almost always a good idea because we just get those as cores potentially. And there are a lot of actually good resources there too, like this 22 rubber. And it looks like unfortunately, Asenian hasn't done their path where they directly ally with us. There are other paths they have where they can make an alliance with us, but they didn't go with the Empress party so they don't get this very nice alliance with Havy's path. Oh well, it's okay though. And here's the main event for the crisis. We have to decide whether we want to negotiate with the separatists or if we want to fight the separatists. If we negotiate with them, we get a pretty bad national spirit, but we avoid a war with the separatists. We do not want to have that national spirit though. So we're going to choose all rebels must perish. We will not play as the free city, but that is an option. They do have a focus tree and we will begin attacking into them. We'll also also want to quickly kick Bastia off of the continent. Bad things will happen if they take control of certain areas. They always decide on a certain goal, like their goal might be to capitulate Ferva, and then they would get Ferva as a puppet. Their goal might be to take Draganiopolis, which is inherently very bad. We'll get a decision to surrender to them soon, and then we can see what their goal is. We also have this here too to see who's winning. Right now we're winning, but that can change very fast. Like I said though, this is much easier for us than it is for them. <laughs> be able to almost immediately kick them out of the port and then we just have to keep them from naval invading us for a while. So this here is where Ferva starts becoming annoying. They start demanding stuff of us. We also here too need to decide who to side with in this war here. We can side with our traitorous general or we can side with some other guy who we don't really care for either. If Malikson wins there's no risk because he's not going to join either side of our war with Bastia but if we side with Lexi, then there's a 50-50 chance that he becomes a huge problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to side with the Binate so we don't have to worry about him becoming some super powerful thing that we have to deal with later in the game. And here we go. Bastia has given up. They've signed a white peace with us. So everything is back to as it was before. We'll cancel this focus real quick and do end of a crisis. And then we'll start with our main political tree here. We'll also now be free from wars for a while. So we will send volunteers both to the Binate and Imperial Vicefire. Well, actually, I don't want to send volunteers to Imperial Vicefire because I don't really want them to do much better than they already are doing. But I guess I will send volunteers if they're doing very bad and about to capitulate. Okay, never mind. Good. This is the best outcome for us. They only took Vicefire. They haven't become crazy powerful. They'll just become decently powerful. They will stay our puppet. And now we're going to do something kind of weird because what I haven't said about Havies yet is everybody Everybody kind of hates him. The imperialists hate him because he's a pacifist and he has all these weird conflicting hypocritical ideologies baked into his political party. Everybody in parliament hates him because he's an emperor and trying to seize absolute power. So we're going to remove him by doing this soul of the empire focus. We'll also go into partial mobilization too so he can start using more of our factories. There are several different things you can get with the purple power that you get in this gauge here, I think. Or maybe there's just one thing clicking this button and then you get cool stuff by maximizing the power. So we will do that. See, now we have a ton of political power instead of no political power. And we will get Shaggy as a financial advisor. I'm also going to go off of service by requirement because we don't need to be on service by requirement. Something I haven't mentioned yet too is that after Havies took power, he destroyed an entity known as the Central Dracanicum that was 
was here in North Spire's Watch in the Eve. There are still ruins of it, and we can investigate the ruins to get a small buff to our industry, which we will do soon. And later in the game, too, the Ember Dracanicum here may try to restore the central Dracanicum, so that could be an issue, but usually they just die to the collective. I'll also want to pass this military readiness decree, but I will wait to pass it until Hades is out of the picture. Since Hades is a pacifist, he will get mad if we pass this decree, but if we just wait until he's gone, then we can pass it with no downsides. We just get free military factories for some political power. we will also now appeal to Lexi. We'll tell him about how Hades is so mean sending these divisions to his enemy and that he should support us. And for the new emperor, we have three choices. We can choose Diarvis, who's currently ruling Imperial Vicefire, Eganshard, or Revraria. And we will today choose Revraria because she has the most interesting focus tree. See, and now here doing this decision does not make the emperor mad because the empress does not care about militarization anymore. So here we have one bill decreed. We might do some of these other ones too. They're all pretty good. Military readiness one though is the most important. We need factories to make guns so that we can deploy these divisions so that we have enough deployed manpower to do the to the east focus. Yeah, and Asenian is now trying to spread to societies to the Everglades. Bastia is trying to remove their rogue general and Gabaro. Bastia seems to be doing decent. What we want to happen though is for Bastia to fail to liberate Kabaro because if they defeat this guy, not only will they take control of this territory, but they'll give a bit of it to Azaria and then Azaria will most likely join Bastia's faction. So it's a very bad sequence of events that can cause Bastia to become a lot more powerful and for, to make this thing drag on for a lot longer than it needs to should they fail there. Speaking of that, I'm actually going to send volunteers. Nice, this will actually help us quite a bit. Both Azaria and Tevos decided to join us and now they have their great new imperial flags, much better than their old flags. The core constituencies said no, but we have a war goal, so we will just invade them and turn that no into a yes. That should be very easy. Now though, we can do this nice focus here to give a buff to our new puppet states. They're kind of our border of defense in case we end up in a war with any of these countries over here. And now here's where we stand. Pretty powerful. We're in a good situation. There's just one loose thread. We didn't kill Hades Gildenwing, the old emperor. He still exists out there somewhere, probably plotting his return, and we can't really have a pretender running around, so Hades will die. We have to kill him if we can. I'm sure that'll go very well. He'll die very easily. So about killing Hades. Killing Hades did not go very well, so now we're once again led by Hades. The thing about this, though, is that now that we're led by Hades, we have access to Hades part of the focus tree. So we will immediately do the apex of eons and start the amazing Spire's Watch utility company, the best utility company in the world. After that, we will start reforging this claw blade called Vivoninia. There's really no reason to do it. Hades is just kind of out there. It's not like a magical sword, really. Well, it's kind of magic, but not in a good way. Yeah, the utility company, the future is here. Yes, I love the utility company. Now we have economy mechanics, but don't worry. These aren't complicated economy mechanics. These are very, very simple economy mechanics. And after we get this free research slot, we will go to working on the claw blade because none of the other company focuses are very vital right now. What we want to do is to get powerful because Bastia is gearing up for war. And here Bastia is a bit more problematic because they have gone with their terror, darkness, fear, destruction path, which makes them a bit more powerful at the cost of a little bit of morality. Regardless though, they will be pretty powerful today. And when we went to war, I forgot to resend my volunteers to Kabaro, so Kabaro is now a proper Bastian puppet. That isn't a very big deal though, since we have Azaria as a puppet, Bastia can't do the thing where they give some of this stuff to Azaria in exchange for an alliance. Our puppet Azaria also has flames on that, so they'll be able to occupy it better for us later. I'm also going to take a focus tree detour to do this focus to get some air experience so that we can make some planes. I guess I can also recruit the chief of air force person to get some air experience too. But we'll need some so we can actually make some plane designs to use against Vashtia. We're eventually going to have to sink their navy somehow so that we can take some of their victory points that are on these islands. Vashtia and Purex also have mechanics where they can annex the minor republic. So that's 
that's why Bastia looks a bit weird right now. Oh, okay, and here it is. Bastia has declared war on us. The fifth Draganiopolis crisis. We automatically have made a faction now, though. The Godless Coalition. Bastia has the World's Alliance. Ferva also left our faction at the worst time possible. It's going to be very problematic, though, because they have two ways they can go. They can either declare war on us, or they can go in the other direction. But the other direction are puppet states of ours, so there's basically a 100% chance the Ferva attacks us. Unless we do this, the Yellow Wyvern Horde stays neutral, but we probably should invade them anyways, so I'm going to do it. That might be a terrible idea, but I think that that will work out for the best in the end. And more countries are staying neutral. We kind of have to declare war on them, though, because then there's no easy way to get to Ravreed, Bastia's capital. Okay, the Yellow Wyvern Horde is gone. Not really too much progress, considering they weren't really a thing we had to deal with. I just decided to invade them because it kind of made the borders a bit better and easier to deal with. What we really need to do now is move some divisions here and try to get to Ravreed. We can take Ravreed, that'll solve a lot of our problems. We also need to start building railroads too. Finally, the Flare has declared war on Bastia, invading from the south to try to retake the Flare authority, so that will open up a new front. They joined Asenian's faction instead of our faction, but that's fine. We will be doing not so nice things to Lord Caldecor anyways, so this is for the best. It's also very good that Siloth is taking a long time to deal with the Vilevan, because Siloth will eventually probably attack us, and that will be very bad. And I think at this point too, Solsider will end up being a really good ally, so I'll invite them to our faction and join their war against Nakia. Okay, and this is bad. The kingdom of Elendar joined Bastia. Pretty powerful right now, but now I'm wishing we didn't declare war on Nakia because now we don't have those divisions to spare. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to retreat to this and then use these divisions to garrison the border with Elendar. Okay, and things took a turn for the worse for Bastia. We capitulated their Marianne puppet state and then Aro immediately capitulated after that. So things are looking bad for them. If they didn't have Elendar and Nakia, then this would pretty much be over. Nakia somehow has a ton of divisions and medium tanks too, so they are going to take a little bit longer than I thought they would take. Purix also declared war on Bastia, so that's convenient. Purix and Bastia are ancient enemies who teamed up a while back to fight us, but now they're enemies again, so that works out well. Bastia also has no divisions defending their mainland, so I'm just going to let my puppets walk in and destroy them. We have also finally got Vivaninia, the great magical not really sword. We can now do great things, like we can get more war goals, or we can do this, those better dead, and we will start with that. We've also taken Ravreed, which is nice. I will ask for control of Ravreed because I kind of want that, and we will finish taking the Bastion mainland. All that will be left now is to take a few of their islands so that they capitulate. So yes, here we go. There are a lot of bad people. Some don't really matter as much because their countries have capitulated, but some may be kind of problematic, like this guy. I guess his country is about to capitulate too, so this doesn't matter too much. So maybe we shouldn't do that, but we will do this, the false prophet. It technically might be on our side, but they're a warmonger nonetheless, pulling countries like Roman Scon and Nerva into Bastia's faction. And yes, Prophet Mothius has been found dead. Who could have killed her? This is crazy and impossible. So there's now a revivalist faction that rose up in a civil war against them. Who could be responsible for this? Anyways, we're now going to move on to attacking this fake goddess, Viva Incarnate. Her faction will eventually push south and threaten us, so we must deal with her before she can injure our cause. And wow, it looks like the goddess that was leading the collective is dead. What's their point now? It doesn't really matter. They don't have this goddess that they're going on a crusade for. Okay, and this is where it really begins. Siloth has finally declared war on someone in our faction. At least we can invite one person that's up war with them to our faction. We will accept both those call to arms. Starkia will join our faction too. We'll invite them and hopefully they don't join the war with Nakia because that might make them lose. I'd really like to capitulate Alendar so we can skip a focus, but since they have so many divisions in this tile, there's no way we're going to capitulate them, so we're going to just have to deal with their leader more directly. And by the way, if anyone was wondering, this is how the faction map mode looks right now. There's a few big countries over here that aren't in a faction, but everybody else is pretty much in a faction.
action. And now that we're at war, it's time that we deal with the false god of the palace lands. He is my favorite character because his name is Biscuit, but well, you know, um, some things are just not meant to be. At least Rashia lost too, right? This is the end though. Kind of the end. Not really the end of the playthrough, but at least the end of the Godless Empire. Maybe this could have been prevented. And at least Havies survived. It's very, very hard to kill this dragon. Like I said though, not the end of the playthrough. We'll be picking up on this next time, the Phantoms of the End. Until then though, the mod is out. It probably will have a few issues that will need to be patched for these first few days, but hopefully it's interesting enough as a mod. Anyways, I will see you all next time. Thank you.